All right, guys, it's been almost three months that I've been uh, flatbed. So what do I prefer? Flatbed or drive-in slash reefer? of the tubiest the best youtube subscribers on the planet that's you i'm 50 plus and we're pushing real close to the uh three months uh flatbed and i hope you can hear me well i got the truck running um got my instant pot going i'm about to uh make some carnitas uh i think that's how you pronounce it anyway it's good um uh, actually i put them on a pit at home and it takes them a long time to cook you know but uh i smoke them at home i like that and then i put them in a vacuum you know what let me let me just show you there you go see i vacuum seal them but as you can see they've already been smoked and uh, uh i put in my instant pot it only takes them about an hour but if you you know if you cook right on the stove or put them in a crock pot you generally cook them for excuse me for quite a long time but they just they get after it in this instant pot so i love it anyways uh, so i got that truck running so that the inverter can can keep my instant pot going right now i got it on saute mode because i uh, i put water in it and then I boil the water and, and, and wash it out really good before I use it again. Uh, anyways, uh, dry van and reefer. There are some pluses and minuses to both. Uh, uh, re refrigerated, uh, man, I, I think there's a lot more, I mean, from my experience, there's a lot more wait time at chippers and receivers with when you're doing refrigerated trucks, man. I mean, uh, those guys sit around a lot, you know, they get paid, attention pay, you know, after, but it's always after so long, you know, and it's just, to me, it, it, especially when you're running cents per mile and, and it's, you, you, it's just not, I don't like it, but that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It's just there's a there's a lot of wait time. A refrigerator generally pays a little bit more per mile than a drive-in, but drive-in has a, a lot more dropping hooks, and it it, it, it tends to uh, empty faster. You know there are some weights, so don't don't get in your head that, that I'm saying that there's no layover or wait time with uh, with drive-in because there is, but in comparison to refri refrigerated. There's no comparison at all. Refrigerated at those are, and there's extra things that you have to do with the refrigerator, like uh, wash out and, and stuff like that, clean the, the trailer out. Drive in, you get a broom, sweep it out, move on next. You know, and it ha that happens over and over and over again. But refrigerated, man, that you're gonna, you, you got more wait time. It's not a lot of, the work isn't the same as of course, uh, flatbed, but there is more work in, involved with and more time dedicated with refrigerated than dry van. Okay, so out of those two, I would prefer dry van. Flatbed, in comparison to pulling a box, either one. Flatbed carries way more challenges, way more work. But there's almost no time uh, in detention or, or uh, even even finding parking. Most of the places that you you can park at the shipper receiver, I mean that really makes a difference. And uh, but the trade-off is is there's a lot more work, man. There you dirty every time you get out of the truck and you look at a flatbed and you just get covered with dirt. You don't even got to touch it. You just look at it. And all of a sudden, you just head to toe covered in dirt. 
that's what it is, man. And then when the summertime, it's starting to get a little warmer in Texas. You get a little warm, you sweating like a hook in church. You know, I mean, I can only imagine what it's gonna be like when the temperature is 100 degrees. You know, having to get out there and tarp and, and, and secure loads. By the way, tarping loads are as bad as, as I guess the world would, would want you to believe. It's not that bad. You know, I mean, uh, the last shipper I had, they used a forklift and they used this boom and you hook your tarp to it and they use a forklift and drag the, 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 the tarp over the load. But I'm pulling some some wall insulation. You know, it's like uh, foam with two sheets of, of thin aluminum mashment. It's like insulation, right? I mean, you can actually get this and squeeze it with your fingers. It's pretty tender. And it's extremely light. I mean, I'm loaded from the front to the back and only weighs 7,000 pounds of freight. But it has its, its challenges with uh, securement. And, uh, you know, you don't, you, every time you pick something up, it's a different challenge. That's, you know, to some, a negative. But to me, it's a plus. I, I like that. Excuse me a minute. Uh. Hey, hang in there. I just needed to turn my pot off. It's boiling. All right, thank you. I had to turn my pot off. It was boiling, and uh, I still have to touch it. I don't want it to peel my skin off. Anyways, uh, so, you know, there, there's a dramatic difference, you know, in labor. It's more labor-intensive by a long shot. Do you make more money with flatbed? You do, but you earn it. You do. You earn it. Here's why I like flatbed, because the high epsilon of trucking the big boys the guys that get the the dollars okay the big boys uh those guys pull big stuff heavy stuff oversized stuff you know i mean can you imagine what those guys pulling those windmill blades are making they don't have to pull a whole lot of them <laughs> i can tell you that they can just go on for the year okay uh, the guys that pull, you know, you know, oversized tractors and, you know, you'll see them with, with 15 axles, you know, 20 axles. Those guys making the dollars and you don't get there driving a van, whether it be refrigerated or driving, you know, there's a, there's a hierarchy and it starts with a flatbed. Then you go to step deck, you know, and then you go to a low boy, then you go to a, a extendable. And then, and then multi-axle and then so it's a progression to get up there to where the money is the big 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 money okay um, you can still make a very good living out here pulling a box but if you want to get up there where the big boys at you have to do what I'm doing you know you to climb that ladder so if my preference would always be open deck because I want to get up there I don't want to just pull a box around you know uh, that that might change the older you get, you know, and the, the, you're less likely to to want to, you know, drag chains around, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and deal with the headaches of of oversized loads. And that day may come for me, you know, uh, but I got to get there first. But that would be the reason why I would choose flatbed, and I would recommend anybody who is as aspirations to pull big loads like that get started in a flatbed lickety split real quick that way you can start getting your experience and, you know every load is a little different man and uh you know securing them is different hauling them is different everything is different depending on what's back there you know it's not like a box you hook up to it and pull it the only difference is the weight. You know, you don't touch the freight most of the time. You know, especially you're doing a dedicated route, Home Depot, I mean, a, a Dollar General or something like that, you know, or a grocery store or something like that where you're unloading it. Other than that, 
you know, you pull that box, you don't touch the freight. I generally don't touch the freight on this on these loads except to secure it. That's it. You know, the shipper receiver is unloading and loading. Uh, but you are doing a lot of, I mean, climbing on ladders. It's a lot of work. But at the end of the day, the goal is, mine, is to pull big stuff. You know, oversized stuff. So there's this progression and I would rather do, uh, I would have to do flatbed to get there. So, you know, my opinion may be skewed, but this video is about my opinion. I've done uh, uh, dry van, I've done refrigerated, and um, uh, I, I actually, the refrigerator wasn't bad for me because I was pulling Costco. It was a dedicated route. So it wasn't like, you. I'm not pulling up to Costco and waiting half a day or two days to get unloaded, you know. It's not where it worked for me. However, I do remember pulling up to uh, Costco, uh, D.C. In, uh, in Utah. And on their lot is another lot on their property. And it's all sectioned out. It's like a truck stop. And it's there for drivers to go sit up there and wait. You check in and go sit over there and wait for your car. They give you a little buzz. Then you go pull up and, you, and they, they tell you what doctor go to. I didn't have to because I guess we've had it worked out with them. I just pull up there and pull right in, go grab the trailer I won't pull out, then go to the store. And when you get to the stores, I rarely waited at a store at Costco. They kind of got their stuff together, you know. So my my experience with, with uh, refrigerated is similar to my experience with driving in. I like the, the refrigerator part of it to the point where uh, they delivered early, which gave me time to get a dry load coming back. They put a dry load in the back of the refrigerator truck and come on back. So I like that part. <laughs> well, but for you, you want to choose between dry van and refrigerated or an open deck. You need to decide what you want. What do you want out of trucking? If you want to be a dry van guy, then you, you're going to do just fine. If you, you know, you want to be a refrigerator guy, you're going to be just fine. There's the, the, the spectrum of either one of them is broad. Okay. So choose what you want. Choose what's going to make you happy. I chose uh, to do this uh, flatbed because at the end of the day, I want to do oversized load. This is the route I got to take to get there. You, you just need to take the route. Choose what you what you want to do so you can take the route to get there, okay? Until I see you again, deliver, undistracted, dry van, refrigerated, flatbed, whatever your preference. Just deliver it undistracted. Here's your boop. Yeah! Boop.